Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to introduce you to a new sponsor. Well, new to you, not to me. Zycam Nasal All Clear. Listen, this keeps your nose clean, clear, and healthy as part of your daily routine, and it's different because it's easy to use and it's convenient for on the go. Look, we've all dealt with this, but Zycam. This nasal all clear, the swabs, they deliver the triple acting benefit of protecting, cleansing, and soothing your nasal passages. Al, we all need to soothe our nasal passages. This is a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula, and uh, I like to say I swab it out in the morning. Just swab it out. Just swab it out. Look, it literally allows you to swab it out. I wake up with the dryness due to congestion, and Zycam's nasal all clear just swabs it right out. Just swabs it out. And and like I said, easy to use, convenient for on the go. It's a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula. And you can swab it out with Zycam's Nasal All Clear. It's available on Amazon. Search for Zycam Nasal All Clear. That's A-L-L-C-L-E-A-R. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in one and all to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, January 14th. Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. We have an exciting episode of the show today, our annual Footballers AMA episode. Ask me. Ask me anything. Jason, lots of questions about his life. Uh, you know, we always find out new things about Jason each and every year. Like when we found out that you were part of a mime troupe at mm. some point in time, <laughs> oh, very yeah, important. Award wasn't winning. it like years worth of miming that you did too, that we were unaware of like, like touring that, that is incorrect. That is 100% <laughs> uh, inaccurate, but is a fantastic story. Uh, was a, Mike was, was right. Award, there was an award. Yeah. I did win best mime. You won best mime. <laughs> How many other mimes did you compete against to, for that honor? Because I there's pro- probably about uh, fifteen. So. Were there? Okay, oh, this yeah. isn't this Took isn't like out. when you were in jujitsu and like <laughs> and and all the all the I weight classes a- break down to where there's two people competing. You're like, yeah, I won silver. Ah, I won silver. I uh, I won one. I lost one. <laughs> and no. I got silver. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I did it. All right. Thank you for joining us. This will be a fun one. We also are going to be sharing some of your stories on today's show. Oh, yeah. As we're going to be taking it to 100, uh, we asked you to submit some of your last second victories, uh, championship stories, things of that nature, and I'm excited to get into those. You can watch the show. Can you believe it? They have the technology now. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. And if you subscribe and you click the bell, then you're alerted to new episodes. And when we put some other cool content up there, we do giveaways and things like that. You can check it out. And Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers if you want to follow us there. Jason, are you ready? Can you handle the truth? Because it is coming. Oh, brother. I not only can handle the truth, I'm going to give the truth. Yeah, we've got truth episodes coming up next week. I've I've been, I don't know if you two are aware, but Brooks and I have been working on all of those uh spreadsheets doing the work of, uh, of, the, of the truth series but there's some interesting information already you're the you're itself. the tom cruise and i'll be the nicholson that is correct now we actually hook you up to a lie detector during the whole four episode series right that is right we do not know how to read it but it is going <laughs> and it's actually just just wires hooked up to a car battery and then clamped Ooh. on his nips. Right. <laughs> okay, and that's it's like, a, if, it's if a different I lie. kind of lie detector. I mean, <laughs> oh, and uh, when you say you worked with Brooks, you do mean Brooks's staff, right? Like he employed a, a number of people to work I, on it on yes, his behalf. I, I meant Brooks LLC was what I was when I was working <laughs> with the corporation and um, it's, they, they've been fantastic, top down, just well organized. All right. Well, I'm glad we handled all of these important topics at the top of the show. 
Uh, let's take it to 100. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and Shoulders. Available at Walmart. All right. Last week, I was crowned, uh, I believe, best fantasy player on earth. Is that the was that the title? I think uh, it, was it was something, something like that. Yeah, it was oh, something like that. You took it up to 100. You were the champion. Uh, yeah, you know, Ster- Sterling Shepard. Yeah, Sterling I've got Shepherd, a trophy. Man, what a call! I've got a, I've got a trophy now, and uh, you don't. So I'm the I champ. I do have a trophy, but it's unfortunately in the other room. Yeah, <laughs> you can't pull it Dang out. It. All right, <laughs> all right. We did say we wanted you to send in some of your fans, uh, some fan stories from 2020, the last season. Lots of championships out there, and we wanted to read some of them on the show today. This is your opportunity to tell us how you took it to 100 this year. I will kick it off. Uh, We're going to read a few of these because they are, and then we can react. We can react to these stories. Uh, We got one in from a friend of the show, Sharks Are Cool, (laughs) on Twitter. Was down 31 points after Sunday in week 14, which was week one of the fantasy playoffs. Had only Lamar Jackson left and won on the 44-yard touchdown (laughs) pass. That 44-yard touchdown was a fourth and five when Lamar came back into the game and then (laughs) went on to win the championship. Hashtag take it to 100. Yeah, that's that's good because you you assumed you lost already in that game. And then he comes back. Phew. That's and it was the it was the quintessential like bomb to win the game. That's it amazing. was one play. All right, so that's James. Awesome. James from Twitter wants to know if this counts. His seven year old's team, aka Panda Four Seventy Two, <laughs> okay, coming from behind in a two week playoff on the backs of King Henry and Jonathan Taylor, sixty eight points Whoa. in week seventeen for her first oh, Super Bowl. In her first ever league, I would say that took it to 100. You had the RB1 and 2 on the yeah. week. Yeah. Wow. Com- coming from behind, too. So after you after you were facing a deficit, you needed it, and you got it from the That's best fabulous. two running backs. That's awesome. Grant says, well, it's hard for me to pick a week where my team took it to 100 because <laughs> it happens so frequently. This league has been around for years, and I now have the number one two, four, and fifth highest weekly scores over those years. T- Congratulations, Grant. Noise. It's okay to sniff your own farts at this time of year. I mean, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. All right, we got another one here from uh, Stanzy Sports. Faced one of my best friends in week 13. Winner got the final playoff spot. Loser was eliminated. And the walrus said... <laughs> Cuckoo Kachub <laughs> and scored 46 points, and he won by 119. <laughs> oh, That's a beatdown. That is that. a beatdown. Oh, yes. Cuckoo Kachub. That should have said former best friend because there's no way you can repair that at this point. Yeah, that's that's broken. That's done. But at least you <laughs> took it to 100. Uh, how about this one from Matt Wells on Twitter? It was week 12. I need to win. I need another guy to lose, and I need 54 more points than him to make the playoffs. I have Tyreek Hill, James Robinson, and Drake. He needs David Johnson to score at least 10 points against Baltimore, but he only got 8.4 with the drops. Oh, was that Deontay? Oh, Deontay Johnson. Oh, that was the game with all the drops. He only got 8.4 fantasy points, and uh, Matt Wells playoff bound after that spectacular all right this one's from logan jones fellas this is this is amazing with mark andrews on the COVID list and fearing the baltimore pittsburgh game wasn't going to happen in week 12 i took a shot in the dark at tight end was about to miss the playoffs by two points until a needless eagles hail mary found its way into the arms of richard rogers no (laughs) way a Richard that, Rogers title on a Hail Mary. That is by far my personal favorite because it's insane. I mean, you I, wow. you, you throw Richard Rogers in your lineup, and that's just that's just basically saying, okay, I'm done. And then a Hail Mary, you win it. 
playing Richard Rodgers was a Hail Mary by itself, and then yes. you won with a Hail Mary to, to Richard Rodgers. So that is unbelievable, and we want to thank everybody for sharing some of those hashtag take it to 100 stories with us. You can browse them on Twitter, too, if you if you put that hashtag in there, uh, at take it to 100, if you want to see some more of these stories, some great ones. Uh, man, those are always always a lot of fun. It's fun. A reminder to take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders available at Walmart. You can pick yours up today. I did want to thank you guys for holding it down mm. on Tuesday. I listened to that episode, uh, and you guys were drafting the top 24 players. We were. For, for 2021, and I know you know a lot of effort was put into that episode going through and kind of establishing those early lists. And I thought that the kind of culmination of that entire process when I was listening was the Devontae Adams, when do you take the first wide receiver? And then when do you take Travis Kelsey? And I think they went 8-9 or 9-10 in your guys' uh, back and forth. Yeah, yep. something like that, 7 or 8. And there was your critique was, in fact, against the pick that I made because I took Devontae Adams. Uh, I took him over my tier of like Nick Chubb. And right after I took Adams, Jason took Travis Kelsey. And then you you said, as you were listening, that I did it wrong. I should have taken Travis Kelsey right there before any wide receivers had been drafted. That was that was my, I wonder if they'll remember Kelsey and I wonder what they'll do with Kelsey moment. Where I was like, this is about where, because once the Adams uh, bell goes off, we were like, okay, it's time to, to maybe right. move beyond running back. The question in my head was like, I think Kelsey should go right here. And I kind of, you know, through we we talked about it a little bit on Slack. And um, look, you're not going to go wrong with Devontae Adams. It's really not a critique on him. It was more a debate about how valuable is Travis Kelsey? Five straight years at number one at the tight end position. And there's a lot of good points on both sides, right? There's points to replaceability. Like if you have an injury to Devontae Adams, obviously that sucks. And you've actually had to deal with it quite a bit with Devontae Adams. Yeah. Um, but it's a more replaceable position, right? You could find somebody at wide receiver a little bit easier than a Kelsey replacement. Like that gap, if you lose Kelsey, you're not picking up Waller off of the free agency. or You just go or, get Richard Rodgers, my man. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. But um, but it was kind of, I brought up the point to Jason. I was like, man, it, you know, if you could choose to play Devontae Adams at, at wide receiver or at tight end, where does he represent the biggest advantage? And they actually have really similar fantasy outputs over the last five years. They're almost identical total yeah, fantasy points, which obviously speaks, I think, more to Adams. He's missed more games, but still has that total. So he's been, you know, the higher point score on average. But man, what a decision for fantasy owners to decide where Kelsey belongs. Because after five straight years at number one, you know it won't last forever. That's the that's the hard part. But is it's to... lasted as close to fantasy forever as it gets. Is where, in the game of being out in front, which loss are you willing to take? Are you are you willing to take the L of, I'm guessing that this is the year that Travis Kelsey is not that dominant number one guy, or take the L of, of him you're like betting that he will still be that dominant? Because the last couple of years, it is, has been absurd. that I mean, like Kelsey would be finishing as a top 10 wide receiver, uh, and he always dominates whoever's in second. So take the take the gamble that he will be that. But he, what's what's he thirty two? Am I remembering? Yeah, it that sounds, right? sounds about right. I mean, the hard part is is it's not like it's a guarantee at wide receiver. I mean, Michael Thomas was the first wide receiver off the board yeah. this year, and it was all under the basis of Michael Thomas is a guarantee at the position, <laughs> and uh, and so some of that durability with Kelsey and Kelsey I, will be thirty two in October. Yeah, I just. I don't know. I found myself leaning the Kelsey side, which it's an interesting I don't blame you. debate. So that was a lot of fun. You guys, uh, you guys did well. You always got the bonus extra, you know, 20 minutes of the show. That's uh, right. When, when Mike's hosting it. So <laughs> I know, away, you, the boys will I know play. you're trying to endear yourself to everybody and, and supplant me. So People that's the way to do it. More content. I know. What'd you think of the, uh, before we move on to the next part, what'd you think of the, uh, where I took cam Akers? Are you that bullish on cam Akers with me? I'm getting convinced. Yeah, I'm becoming convinced for sure. You know, everything about all the rookie class at running back was about where they landed and what kind of opportunity that they were going to get. And I think we saw over the back three, four, five games, 
what Sean McVay would like to do with Cam Akers and what his ability is. And the ceiling is so much higher than the, the other options he has there. So hopefully he can stay healthy and that's a worthwhile yeah. pick. I was so unhappy uh, for solely just Cam Akers reasons uh, of his playoff performance. The fact that he won, he's going to go to another playoff game and get more national exposure. Like if, if, if they didn't make the playoffs, if somehow they could, oh, Cam Akers would have been one of my favorite draft picks next year. But more people are going to see him in, in the national spotlight and see what he's doing and dominating, and I he'll did, just be higher because of it. I did have one um, one other comment on the draft, because I know J.K. Dobbins went in that top 25 as well. You guys left um, Joshua off the board. Mm -hmm. Mr. Josh Jacobs, um, had you... You know where was he on your list compared to where he went? Because top twenty-five, I mean, that is a that would be a stark drop for a player who actually outperformed on a point per game basis. The his rookie I'm, season. I am still waiting for. We have some off the field things that need to clear up. I wondered if uh, that had something to do. And with it. and and if like if if that trouble goes through of uh, of his uh, incident, he's going to miss games. And I'm not like Josh Jacobs to me. I the, he, as a player, he's fantastic, but. He isn't so special that I'm going to absorb two to three games on my bench while I could be taking someone like J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, he okay. wasn't. He wasn't. You know, Zeke when he was suspended, or Le right. Bell when he was. Uh, you know, going to miss a couple games. I have him at 28 right now on my big board. And Where that does that is, put him as your uh, what running back number that, though? Because well, was it puts the, him behind Antonio hmm. Gibson, who I have slightly ahead of him, and. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who I, I still believe can take a step forward next year. Jacobs, despite the injuries that he both played through and the game he missed, you know where he finished? I do not. He is the RB8. Not bad. With not a, bad. With a B consistency level uh, uh, last year. So that was the only other comment I had, but I, I enjoyed it very much. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Now, the the reason why I wasn't on the show is you guys were so kind to let me go spend some time with the family up north and get a little decompression after the long season. And I was just wandering the dark woods at night. So I really appreciate you letting me Glad do that. Glad to see you made it out. Uh, barely. Just, <laughs> just barely. Ooh, don't say barely. Don't say barely. When yeah, talking yeah about them woods. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> All right, buy, sell. Here we go. DJ Moore. Will he have a better fantasy football finish in 2021 than he did in 2020? Uh, where did he finish, you ask? He was the wide receiver 22 in half PPR scoring. Now, in, in three years, he's dealt with low touchdown totals. Mm -hmm. He has not gone over four in a season, and he's uh, hit that, not, that mark four times. Uh, the last two years, I know when we came into the year, that was something we brought up. Mm -hmm. We said, "Hey, this has got to change." Um, and 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 I I still think it does have to change. It's not to say that some players score fewer touchdowns than others, but you look at Robert Woods as a player who historically doesn't score a lot of touchdowns, and then if, if you're involved in an offense in a major way, eventually touchdowns will come, even if that's not your forte but the big thing for me is Curtis Samuel Curtis Samuel yeah. is a completely unrestricted free agent I don't expect him I I don't think it's a lock that he comes back he's going to test the waters see if he can be higher up on the depth chart not be you know fiddling around for is he second or third on the pecking order and, and probably get paid more to do that I don't think the Panthers are in a position uh, to pay him a lot of money if someone else is able to. Now, if he's gone and it's just Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore in year two of that system, I'm I'm uh, pretty all about them and their their outlook next year with Christian McCaffrey helping move the offense forward. I was going to bring up Christian McCaffrey because this was a year where we did know what the quarterback situation was going to be. Bridgewater really fell off a cliff over the back half of the year in terms of our confidence on his future. And, you know, McCaffrey will get his, no doubt. So, I mean, wide receiver 22, that's not a difficult place to get to. That's the, you know, or above 22. I I guess I would sell it. Um, I guess I'll, I'll go sell. I don't think DJ Moore is like, you know, that's not really a huge indictment. I think I just would like other wide receivers more. 
than the unknowns there. Sure. I'm going to buy. I mean, he is he is such a difficult player to gauge. I mean, he did miss a game, but uh, ninth in receiving yards among wide receivers. I mean, he was on a – if you give him that – you fill in the blanks on that game that he missed, he's well over 1,200 yards on the season. And you look, and he has over 90 yards in eight or nine of his games. His, it just the – the fantasy finish, I, because of touchdowns, a lot of it, it, it betrays like how good he is and how uh, how special he is uh, as an NFL player. But I will buy that he will finish over uh, what did we set the line at at twenty two. Yeah, that's uh, what I'll he set it. the line at. Yeah, 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 it, it, yeah. <laughs> right, that's what he said. Uh, I mean, he was wide receiver eighteen last year, and uh, I think DJ Moore is really one of, a special player. Yeah, I, I do too. The the real question will be Teddy Bridgewater. Is he even the quarterback sure. for 16 games next year? Uh, he's paid to be the quarterback, but he was so bad towards the second half. That would be the downfall of DJ Moore to me. It's not It's not in DJ Moore's talent. Well, I think we learned, uh, too, what the team thought about Robbie Anderson. And they brought him in there, and he was obviously the receptions leader. I'm looking at DJ Moore's pace for receptions last year. Even if you um, give him his injured games and pace that out, it's a 70 reception total. That is much more a big play, ironically, a lot like Robbie Anderson in New York type of player that was delivering big yardage plays, but not PPR type of numbers. And it is true, Jay, uh, with Curtis Samuel, you know, that could be the major um, change to the offense that could propel some of those reception totals up if they don't replace him. It, uh, someone will be there. There'll be a third wide receiver, but will they be as good as Curtis? Curtis Samuel picked a great, great time to have a, a career season right before going to get that money. It would uh it's funny you Teddy Bridgewater you we talking about him holding DJ Moore back. I mean, last year it was mostly Kyle Allen. Can we get my man DJ Moore someone capable of throwing him the ball, please? Yeah, yeah, he is um very talented, no doubt. I wonder whether he is the one. I think that is the tough part. Uh, figuring him out and maybe it doesn't matter but yeah uh, I, I don't it it seems like this is just a you know 1a 1b scenario in carolina all right that was buy sell from pristine auction um you officially bought right jay i did i okay. i bought he'll he'll have a great season next year uh pristine auction.com use the code ballers and we did have an ama question about pristine auction that i'll throw in here um they just wanted to know what our favorite pieces of memorabilia are because we have a lot of Mm. Signed jerseys, helmets. My personal favorite, just getting it out of the way here, it's the Josh Allen cleat that mm. you'll see on our studio set back over my shoulder. Um, love Josh Allen. Love the uniqueness of getting a cleat. You know, we've talked about they have like signed pylons and stuff up there. So that's my favorite. My personal favorite is not sports. It's an Ace Ventura signed uh, picture that uh, Pristine Auction has everything, not just... Uh, Sports memorabilia. Sure. And my favorite, if you just look over my shoulder right here, you can you can just kind of make out the numbers, but that is, in fact, a number 11. That is an Arizona Cardinals signed Larry Fitzgerald mm. jersey. That is the prized piece of my collection. And we do want to get into the AMA momentarily. I want to throw one piece of news out there. We don't need the whole segment because there's not a lot. But the Seahawks did fire... Offensive coordinator that Brian, quickly. <laughs> Brian Schottenheimer, and this was shocking because it did not seem like that was going to take place. Now, Pete Carroll came out and said, we need to run the ball more. And normally, you would say, hey, That's who, would when love you to, <laughs> Brian Schottenheimer. who would love to say yes to that more than Brian Schottenheimer? <laughs> In which case, this is concerning because... You are not run heavy enough, Mr. Schottenheimer. That's what he said. And I'm like, is Bill <laughs> Callahan on speed dial at this point? <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I mean, whoever. What was your reaction to that? It, it was pretty shocking because this is a guy who's always been associated with run first, and then Pete Carroll in the press conference was talking about how that's the number one thing they need to get back to running the ball more. Um, they want to, you know, put away the kitchen utensils for Russell Wilson and just have him be the. I mean, which has worked, right? I mean, they've had a, a, a decade of great football uh, with Russell Wilson being. More of the game manager, less of the superstar offensive mastermind. Because he's always bailing them out. Like but, I get it. it but this it year it turned. This year it, it turned it's into hard to argue. Yeah, I know. But it's it's just it is absurd. To I mean, they should have had two Super Bowls. 
Yeah, it's it's just absurd to me. Do, like, is there a reason so we have to run, run, and then Russ has to bail you out on third and long? And they're like, this, this, this keeps going forever. This is working. Do we have to either cook or not cook? Can we not cook a little? Can we not have a balanced offense? Do we like not a have to be diet is an important yeah. part. <laughs> Right. Of, a, of a healthy lifestyle, and absolutely. I love that there's this polarity of, like, we got to be the most run-heavy team or the most pass-heavy team. How about we, we do both? Let's do yeah. both. And they will. Speaking right. of being healthy, before we get into all of the oh, questions yeah. from the Ask Me Anything, this episode of the podcast bah, bah, bah. is brought to you by Fight Camp. Boom, Fight boom, Camp pow. brings the boxing gym right into your home with a mix of cardio and conditioning for a full body workout. You ever feel like, you know, you just want to punch something and you want to get in shape because I feel like that sometimes at fight camp. It's made for beginners all the way to experienced boxers. It's made who for wanna... fantasy players who want to punch something. Absolutely. <laughs> you, did, did you lose on a heartbreaking uh, fashion? Did you lose to a Hail Mary to Richard Rogers? <laughs> and so you need and, and you also want to get in shape. Boom. Yes. Fight camp. They they have everything you need to box at home. Freestanding punching bag, the gloves, the quick hand wraps, uh, their unique punch tracking sensors that show you real-time progress it's great for kids there's family workouts the app comes with over 600 workouts and tutorials they release 12 boxing and kickboxing workouts every week there are tons of highly qualified trainers with real fight experiencing uh, experience ranging from a pro mma fighter to a mother of two to a kickboxing champion i mean it's 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 a good time at home, get in shape, and punch something. Fight Camp offers uh, <laughs> financing, so you can pay over 24 months and get your new gym now. And they are offering a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. That's right. Give Fight Camp a try. And within 30 days, if you don't love it, send it back. Get a refund. Fight Camp is the new way to work out at home. Make a change and join the community that teaches you the art of boxing while following the most intense workouts that there are as quick as 15 minutes. To get free shipping on Fight Camp, just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. That's joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is going to be fun. I can tell you I have no idea what any of these questions are. Uh, we left that up to uh, Brooks and his staff to decide uh, what to do here. He is so, the judge. Yeah, he makes great uh, determinations on our behalf. So we have random questions. We've got, uh, again, a disproportionate amount of food questions. We have fantasy questions. People well, love food. Why? It's because it's delicious, Mike. It is. That's one of the I, big reasons. I All right, like real food. quick. I got my own question for Jason first before we oh. jump in. Uh, if you had to give up meat or sugar. <sighs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. If I had to give up meat or sugar. Yeah. It would have to be meat, sugars in literally everything. I mean, if you're talking about like I can't sprinkle sugar on something, I would give up sugar. <laughs> but if you're just saying I can't. I can no longer eat sugar, then I can't eat. And I know I would be healthier for it, but everything, everything <laughs> right. has sugar in it. All right. Twitter question. Uh, this comes in from at uh, Falk. Oh, be careful, Andy. Uh, where did the producer's <laughs> nicknames come from? Oh, all right. Little uh, <laughs> in inside information to the producers. You have Judge Giamatti. I'll explain this one. Um, All right. One day, a question was asked from a listener about what Brooks looked like, and Andy just said he looks. No, like it was no, it wasn't looks. It was if someone had to play us in a movie. Uh, oh, okay, sure. If someone played you in a movie, and I believe he said, "Well, he looks like Paul Giamatti," <laughs> and then Paul Giamatti became the beginning of uh, Judge Giamatti as he was uh, put the gavel into his hand. And so he has become Judge Giamatti. And uh, something not everybody knows, behind the producer's desk in our studio is a giant, uh, way, off, too big. Awful, way too big, awful picture of <laughs> Paul Giamatti to remind Brooks of how, of how he looks. His, I mean, origins. Just his origin story. Yeah. yeah, We surprised him with that, the Judge Giamatti segment. Like, he didn't even know that was going to happen. There <laughs> we should, just did it. That, that that picture of Paul Giamatti that's behind him, which he's welcome to share. I mean, it, be warned. 
It's the worst picture of anybody's ever taken of somebody. It's the equivalent of the picture where the flash is on and you didn't mean it to be on. Mm-hmm. And you see the mm-hmm. inner yep. pores. Like I who needs Paul Giamatti's pores? I this don't. This is not a professional picture. This is a this is an unprofessional picture. That's correct. So uh that's that one. And then Al Borland, he's kind of known in our office as being the handyman. And before he was a producer, he just helped us with lots of different things in that mm-hmm. realm. He helped hang up this, you know, the the uh, the foundation lighting. of our lighting and and he hung up signs and he always produced things that men do like you know how they build th- you know how men yeah. do stuff mm-hmm. um and i've he, heard about it yeah and then <laughs> and so he was al borland and then somehow that just sounded like we were saying owl like the the bird right well, i thought so i thought there was the stuff he fixed all the things and then we had uh, we were recording spitballers and he was wearing a buffalo plaid red shirt yes that happened which that's Which true. Is, That's true. That is the Borland look, and then we were calling him Al Al Borland, and then that just someone mispronounced someone's like everyone's name. It's on not the show sophisticated. Is, is because we mispronounced something, and then you're just like, no, the, I meant to say that. I meant to say Al Borland. That's right. Prove me wrong. All right. Uh, next question from YouTube. It's a fantasy question. Just wants to know where OBJ will rank next year. Oh, I man. Assume you didn't bring his name up on the last show. So, we no. did not. Um, I, I think he has to rank outside the top 15 wide receivers. I can't fathom putting him inside. There are too many good options that I am all about for next year. Um, but with the volume he will receive, assuming that he is uh, back in that same role next year, it's it would be difficult if he played 16 to finish far outside of, you know, a wide receiver two territory if you're getting, you know, 130 plus targets. So I think he's going to be a back end wide receiver two for me somewhere around that. DJ Moore or Odell Beckham Jr. I would rather have DJ Moore. I would take DJ Moore too. Beckham will probably be like a fifth or sixth round pick, be my guess. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. Instagram question. Uh, I got to really make sure I read who these are from <laughs> in a very careful fashion. Uh, here's the question that came in from Into the Night Records. We okay. Do people ever recognize you out and about while grocery shopping or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does happen. It doesn't happen as often while we don't go out and about anymore. Um, That's a good point. That's you a good know, point. I'm recognized daily in my house from your That's kids. That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, but That's yeah, that it, guy. It, it definitely, it definitely happens, especially as we're traveling, uh, in the past. The, yeah. D- Disneyland. I mean, that was the place, man. You'd run into a lot of foot clan at Disneyland. That's my, my favorite story about getting recognized. It was, it's, it's happened a handful of times, but I, my favorite thing is to give my wife crap and like pretend I'm actually a big deal. And we, one of the times we went to Disneyland, we're in line to go in. And I said, look. I'm really sorry. I have to apologize because I know that there's going to be countless <laughs> Foot Clan supporters. They're going to come up. They're all going to want pictures. I apologize that for the time that that will take, and it's just really embarrassing. You know, it's making this huge ordeal joke about it. And the second we got through the gates, Mike, <laughs> yeah, it was someone who listened to the show. So it was, and my wife was just like, "No, no." <laughs> so yeah, that-, that was fabulous. Those are the best <laughs> moments. Mine is very similar. We were at a zoo, and my wife told me I have one hour. She said, it, she basically said, I have one hour to be recognized, or, <laughs> or I'm a loser. And I got recognized within that hour, which was fantastic. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, we had a related question on Facebook, too, saying, what's the funniest fan realization moment you've ever encountered a time when someone recognized you and no, had well, a, great, just a great reaction? So there you the go. Chipo- the Chipotle story is insane. Do you guys remember that one? Yes. yes so I someone, do. someone uh, on at their job, the, them and their friends listened to the fantasy footballers. He was traveling to Arizona um, for work for like a weekend, and and the guys were like, "Oh, let me know if you run into Andy, Mike, and Jason." And then he did, at and Chipotle. he and he just from our voices. We were we were already sitting down eating, and he recognized our voices. It was that's wild. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. Facebook question from Ryan. Uh, this is the food category that we got so many questions about. What is your favorite French fry and dipping sauce combination? Ooh. Uh, I know mine right away. Well, then please share. 
I am a sucker for Red Robin fries on, with ranch. Uh, mm, that is that's a good that's, one. That's an excellent choice. That is my pinnacle fry dipping sauce combination. There are many that I have up there, though. Oh, man, yeah. Because you went that route with the big steak fries, which are inferior, but still great. Um, uh, Red <laughs> Robin fries in ranch are great. I'm going with Freddy's fries, the shoestring fries dipped in their spicy okay. fry sauce. All right, this is pretty good. And I'll, I will throw out the Chick-fil-A waffle fry into the Chick-fil-A sauce. Nothing wrong with that. That is good stuff. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right. Uh, Twitter question from Jordan Lee. Who would you rather have next year? Deshaun Watson or Justin Herbert? I would rather have Deshaun Watson. Yeah, uh, I I'm, think I'm thinking Watson, but is there... Let's think through it. Is there a, a reason or is there a scenario where it actually is Herbert? Uh, obviously, we're going to have to see what, what coaching changes um, are, are made. That would be one of the biggest factors. And then you have to determine whether or not uh, – see how free agency – uh, goes for Will Fuller. Does say, he let's leave? say Fuller doesn't go back. Is there any? If Fuller doesn't go back, is there any chance you go to Herbert over Watson? I don't not me. think so. Not me. No. There was a stretch, by the way, that week four through eleven, where Herbert, the seven games played, his pace during that stretch was forty seven hundred yards and forty five touchdowns. Yeah. So that insane. that Herbert, yeah, I would take that over uh, Deshaun Watson. But from week twelve on, aka when the shoe dropped. He was a 4,324 passer. So the the truth is somewhere in the middle there. Herbert is a great uh, has a great future, but I am with Jason. I lean a little bit on the Watson side. Well, and the, and the history is, you know, people ask all the time, what what is the most predictable stat? What stat is? And a lot of times people go volume, but the tr the actual answer is that the most predictive stat is historical production. What have they done that sure. is most likely to repeat itself? Do you know where Deshaun Watson finished at quarterback this year? I do. I'm looking at it. Probably quarterback five. Do you oh, know where he, he finished at quarter uh, at quarterback uh, the year before? Five. Quarterback five. Do you know where he finished? <laughs> oh, no. The year before. You see where I'm going here? Quarterback five. So right. he's got uh, Subway foot long um, in the bag, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm I'm gonna write it down right now. He'll be my quarterback five next season. Oh, there you go. That would be a safe bet. Uh, Twitter question from Andrew. F, uh, he says, how do you navigate running a company with such close friends? Things like salaries, time off, when someone shows up late or misses, how much time do you put into research? Uh, you, your show has such a good vibe, and I'm interested in what is behind the curtain. I, I can say this. Uh, there's, there's so many ways that you can get into trouble working with friends or family, but... Uh, the integrity of the actual people that we have assembled as a team, I would say the three of us, as well as every single person who works with us. So integrious. Uh, the, the, I mean, when you have that level of trust and integrity down to every single person, um, it, it becomes really easy. It's not a, it's not a built in crazy strategy. Uh, we have a lot of grace uh, with everything that we do because we have a lot of trust and everyone works hard, so it, it makes it very easy. Yeah, I, I would just add that, you know, we've also had a history of working at different companies, and we've seen the pluses and minuses, I think, of, of working with close friends. And when we started this company, we came into it with a level of trust with one another and with a genuine desire to do the best for one another. You know, we, mm -hmm. we don't have power struggles because... You know, it probably helps that there's three of us, so you can always have a two to two to one vote on something where we disagree. But um, we don't want anybody doing something that you know they're not excited and enthusiastic about. So um, that's made it a lot easier. And I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of people that have had those situations where, you know, if you have a problem working with friends in the first like month of working together, just imagine when your business grows and when you have to make bigger decisions. Those things don't go away. So I guess it's a point when your of, business fails. Either either <laughs> way, I would say at, at at the beginning of the business, it's important to set forth a standard for how you will handle all of those types of decisions, and it makes everything so much easier. And people always ask, like you know, the biggest fight we've been in and stuff like that. And we've had plenty of disagreements or moments where we're like, oh yeah, I really believe this, I really believe that. But those things are, you know. 
They're usually fantasy football related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're usually when Mike beats me in the league of record playoffs. Um, so, no, I, I think we are super blessed. And what Jason speaks to about having, you know, just this staff that we do, um, people like Brooks and Al and Kyle and, and Brian and uh, tons of people. I don't want to leave somebody out, but that's the thing we look for when we hire as much as we do any of any of the other peripheral skills. Yep. I, I know that they're going to get their crap done. So I need to get my crap done. And that's yeah, that has out. always existed for, for us. We've never had that thing where we're like, this person's just trying to get by for a month or two while the other people work. And you know, that's, that's helpful <laughs> for sure. And, uh, all right, let's move on. Twitter question from Jeremy. Have you ever tried a vampire league? What are your thoughts on this idea? And what, uh, which one of you is the most likely to secretly be a vampire? Okay, so mm, two questions question, here, question. slightly different. I have never personally <laughs> played in a vampire league. A vampire league is um, a league where when a team loses, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is this the one where they're gone, right? Yeah, they're, they're gone and everybody gets to uh, draft from their team. No, that's that the, the guillotine league. Oh, that's, that's the guillotine. I thought the vampires, when you beat somebody, oh, you I, get I, I collect someone from your team. I yeah. suck. Yeah. I, I drink I your milk your blood. Yeah. <laughs> 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 See, I thought it was a league where everyone brings a pint of their own blood, and whoever wins the league gets all the blood at the end. That's different, oh. though. That's a Really that's, happy it's not that. Really yeah, excited yeah. about um, just taking <laughs> Unless one you were of your a vampire, players. in which case, that's the kind of league a vampire would play in. Because That's, at the end, the I pot need the is, draft at two a.m. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that league seems awesome. I've never played in one. That David seems like such a, <laughs> yes. such a fun league. But I do imagine that the you know one of the problems you have in in normal fantasy leagues is that um, you know cer certain managers just quit a little bit earlier if things don't go right. But in this league, I feel like that would be even more exacerbated. By the midway point, you've got the teams with all the stars and the teams who've been fleeced of their stars that would be so painful to lose a player that way man yeah. so painful all right uh youtube question from maurice keep trade cut question this one's important guys snickers milky way kit kat mm. keep mm -hmm. trade cut mm -hmm. it's easy i'm gonna keep the kit kat i'm gonna trade the snickers highest trade value and who wants a milky way are Nobody. you <laughs> <laughs> Who wow. wants some Milky Way? How are you associating the trade value? Is that based on marketing dollars spent to sell you Snickers? 100%. Yeah, okay. The Snickers marketing budget is the largest. They're the most popular, and they're not as good as a Kit Kat. So, I, I mean, I'm just taking advantage of uh, trade capital here. I'm you had, in lockstep with Jason. I, I agree. Uh, that being said, I believe that I have been entirely persuaded by Snickers marketing that it is more of a meal. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah, if you yeah. if you told me that like I needed to have one of these for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I would be choosing the peanut filled Snickers. If yeah, you I mean, told me that Snickers actually the 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 same company owns and makes Milky Ways, and they put them next to Snickers just so they can snell or sell more Snickers. Oh, I I would firmly believe that because Jason's right. <laughs> who who eats Milky Ways? Uh, and, and don't don't get me wrong. If there's a Milky Way here, I'm yeah. sure it's delicious. <laughs> but like, you, you don't ever have just a bowl of Milky Ways or a but you know. But you you have a choice when you're making a selection. And like Mike said, they, these things are next to each other. Pick one. They the the dark chocolate Milky Ways underrated. You should check them out. Hmm, interesting. All right. Uh, unless you hate dark chocolate, don't check them out then. Anthony from Facebook. If you had to make a solo podcast, a solo mm. podcast, what would it be about? Um, wow. I, I think I would do one on, uh, entrepreneurship. I think that's what I, I would just rant and rave on that. Maybe you guys going to make a Tesla podcast. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. That uh, would be. I, mine would be a, a pop culture show. Talk about movies and video games. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I go to the entertainment side, something, uh, maybe interview style in the entertainment world. Yeah. Cool. All right. Dynasty question about Juju. This is from Joshua oh, in, in Colorado. Yeah. You already know how bad that question is going to be. Would you keep Juju in a dynasty or try to trade him for a first round pick? You, I'm not trading Juju for a first round pick. He, goodness gracious, the, the, the dynasty value of Juju is, it feels like an impossible code to crack because he, 
uh, he well, he's not little... going to be he's not going to be a Steeler. Right. So then it's I mean that makes it really tough to begin with if you don't know what team he's going to be on. Yeah, no, that does make it tough and it's just how good is Juju actually? Cuz he could be awesome or he could just be a super average wide receiver that was put in the perfect situation with his role in that offense and with Big Ben. I don't know which side I believe it, people people don't put up the production that Juju Smith-Schuster has put up uh, it, normally and he's still extremely young like he was doing he's he's doing things at a historic level of of how young he actually is yeah and, and he'll get paid uh he will he's he because he's young because he's a big name he's been a star in the league he's been fantasy relevant uh he, he'll he'll end up making money I, that being said do you guys know how good like early uh before this season started everything was made about the running back free agency class of this year but then they all resigned the wide receiver free agency class this year do you know how good it is have you heard these names let me let me read you a list of I'm who's. sure I've heard them so Allen Robinson I've Will Fuller him. Corey Davis Juju Chris Godwin Kenny Galladay, Antonio Brown. Uh, I Almost mean, it, everybody there is going to get paid more than Juju Smith-Schuster will. Now, the one name that you mentioned, Corey Davis might not. But every, almost everybody else you named is going to get paid more money. Will Fuller is going to get paid more money than Juju. Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin for sure. Juju is not... Like, I, I hesitate because I know, Mike, you were so, like, eye roll about people criticizing him about the TikTok stuff. It just depends on what you believe the makeup of a player is to be a one and what kind of maturity they show. It wasn't just that stuff. Like that stuff doesn't mean Juju's not a good wide receiver. That stuff might mean that Juju's not a great leader when he comes out and says the Browns are the Browns and doesn't make a decision and puts them you know, on the bulletin board and he says those things. I don't know. I don't know if he's a, a bona fide one. You asked that same question. I don't know if he can get separation on the outside by himself with that Antonio Brown. I don't know it yet because Big Ben this year was throw the ball four feet. And Juju was great at that. He was actually a pretty reliable possession receiver. But is that his, his ceiling now? I don't know. Yeah. yeah I, that being said, I would not trade him for a first rounder because in Dynasty, either. I'm always going to take uh, a more sure thing over a uh, more enticing bet. And I'd take say, anything top five. I, I'm, I might take like top three. I haven't really dug in uh, yet. But I mean, you know, there, there's, there's always the Nikhil Harry's. The number one right. overall pick that just they don't become anything. And you know Juju is something. You know for a fact the next five, six years, he will be relevant for fantasy football. Not saying he's going to be a star, but he will be able to be you, in your lineup and score fantasy points. Let me ask you a, another question. Maybe you'll have a quick answer. Robbie Anderson or Juju in a dynasty? I do not have a quick answer. Um, I thought that might be a tough one. That is I thought it tough. might be a tough one. I didn't know if I'd get the quick Juju or something, but Robbie Anderson what? or Juju. So if you want to know, Robbie Anderson was almost irrelevant in Dynasty. And now <sighs> that question is, is more difficult. Man. Um, so Robbie Anderson's three years older than Juju. Robbie, well, Robbie has one year left with the Carolina Panthers. I think I'd go Juju, but it's close. I don't okay. I don't feel great about it. Mike, quick answer for you? I lean Juju. Instagram question from Evan Hill. What is each uh, guy's go-to for doing something fun, not fantasy or football related in Arizona? How do you guys have fun with the family? My go-to outside would be video games. It's just few and far between, but when a great one comes out, I'll hop in spend a couple of weeks uh you know playing through it and then uh and then I'm done. I'm I always a, feel go ahead Mike. Go, uh, I am a movie connoisseur. I'm a movie man. Uh the not being able to go to movie theaters for the last year has sucked a yeah, lot. Yeah, that sucks. That's, that's that's like my favorite thing to do is to go just eat horrifically bad and yeah. then go watch a movie while eating horrifically bad continues. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've all talked about it before. Sometimes I feel panicky about questions like this as though I should have more hobbies <laughs> other than the business. And like, we're all dads. So like, 
honestly, just doing stuff with the kids, whether that's playing sports with them, taking them to sporting things, going out to dinner with them. Like that's kind of, that's kind of our life. I mean, I don't, you know, have anything beyond that. And I like video games too, but uh, Twitter question, some uh, follow-up dad related questions. Aaron wanted to know what is the best advice for a new father of a four month old daughter? Hmm. The advice we usually give is be involved, be active, change diapers, do, uh, you know, feedings if possible. Um, don't be afraid. And that, that would be my biggest, like, if I could only give three words, it would be don't be afraid. Just dive in. Yeah. And I think that don't be afraid goes to a lot of things. You With a first kid, you're just kind of, I mean, no one can prepare you for it, really. Like, tons of people probably told me, don't be afraid, don't worry about it as first kid, and you kind of just deal with it. But like, just, you're not going to break the kid. You're going to make mistakes. They're going to forgive you. Like there is room for a lot of grace in that relationship. You're going to be all right. Yeah, I agree. All right. YouTube question. I'm about to have a second kid. Any advice? So any advice on the second one? Oh man. There's no. Go to sleep. Don't even listen to this podcast, man. Just go sleep right now. Hurry. Uh, (laughs) You're running out of time. (laughs) My my advice is you you don't need any you you already went through the first and this, I mean to me it's easier now. Um, well, it, it, let's be fair here. Let's illuminate for the listenership. Jason did not have the choice of going from one to two. Jason's first two children were twins, so you were yes. insta two. Oh yeah, I was. I so was you in you know two to three, but you don't know one to two. Yeah, I guess what I do know is first time. Uh, around infants and and babies versus I've been there, done that. And yes. th- here's a, a point to illustrate how I mean it. When we had our first uh, babies, I literally installed Purell pumps all over my house. <laughs> Every room you could walk in and you could Purell your hands because I was so worried. You made about, a COVID house. Right. And this Before was in ahead of your time. Nine. <laughs> and Can I give then, you some of that house? The second kid comes along, and I'll I'll throw him cereal on the carpet, and he can eat it right off of that. I do not care. He's gonna live through it. He's gonna make it. So you there know you that's go. kind of the difference. Yeah, I like it. Well said. Um, all right, let's go Instagram. Uh, who is the first to cry during a sad movie? <laughs> that's Jason. Oh, so easily, Oof. Jason. Although Mike is underrated no, would, on this category, saying, it's probably Jason. But I I lately would give him a run for his money. I bet you there's a category that you cry at quicker. You know, there's certain types of moments. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like Jason is pretty quick on the draw, but you you've shown some uh, some weakness to some of these Pixar's and. Oh man! Oh oh brother! I, Pixar is is the death of me. Has anybody ever done like a time lapsed cry race? Like play a movie for two people, put oh, the video camera great. on both of them, <laughs> time lapse it, and see who's the first one to drop a tear. And no one has ever done that. I'll find a really, really sad movie. I know you both it's, can't survive. I, instead of the joke off, it's a cry off. That's I right. Can't, I can't think of whatever the specific example was, but there was something on in my house the other day um, in the living room. I wasn't watching it. I was just walking through, passing by, caught a couple minutes of whatever this show or movie was, and I started to well up and cry over it. And I, <laughs> literally, right, walked, ah! I literally walked away going, why am I crying? Was like, that a drive-by cry? That was a drive-by <laughs> cry. That's right. <laughs> Have you seen, Jason, are you f- familiar with uh, uh, Bedazzled? The with uh, uh, oh, good Elizabeth Hurley. I don't and, think so. Uh, where he makes the deal with the devil. No. Uh, and he no. Just, I have one not of his wishes that. is he wants to be the most. Yeah, Brandon Fraser. Thank you, Al. Uh, yes. He wants to be the most sensitive man in the world, and he. <laughs> So they're on the beach, and he's just crying at every every time he looks at the sunset. He just starts crying. Yes, <laughs> I That's love you. it. That's me. All right, uh, best type of pizza question from Ben Pope sixteen. Is it uh, mm. buffalo chicken or Hawaiian or meat lovers? And and follow up pizza question: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Uh, I will. I will answer the second question first, which. There will never be agreement over. I am 100% fine with pineapple on pizza. The uh, best pizza to me is a thin crust, meat-heavy pizza. Meat-heavy. Mm. Can you go yeah. too much meat? You can on a thin crust. 
Oh, okay. uh, if it's not a thin crust, you cannot. That's impossible. But on a thin crust, you got to be able to get it get a little crisp. Have you ever cried when you saw a piece of pizza that was just <laughs> so beautiful? So beautiful. Just moved. <laughs> it's amore. Pineapple on a pizza is fine, uh, I, but I would never choose it. I think we've said that before. Like, I don't, if I had the option, if they're sitting next to each other, I'm never going to pick up the pineapple one. Yeah, because it's not good. I, I don't that's, care. That's I'm, I'm tired. I, like, I'm, I'm tired of the argument and the, the, the fun pretend outrage. If you want to put pineapple on your pizza, fine. It's, it's bad. And I just recently had a, a situation where the wrong pizza was delivered to my house, and it was a Hawaiian, and it Ooh. was, well, this is the pizza we have here. I'm going to give better this a better than no shot. pizza. Yeah, it's better than no pizza, but it it's it's not better than just like regular cheese. My my favorite pizza, I'm with Jason. I like a good uh, meat lovers pizza, and but uh, man, the the best. I don't know where do you, where are you, Andy? Are you a deep dish or are you a thin crust? I would just say regular, like a neither hand toss. Like if I had to choose between thin and deep dish, I'd probably go thin. But I'm a hand toss regular pizza guy. I I like like a five cheese, but I like uh, beef on a pizza too. Like uh, all right, well that's on our that's on the meat lovers pizza. Yeah, along with everything else, I think you can have too much meat on a pizza though. But that's just me. <laughs> Tacos. <laughs> yeah, that's what I call a pizza. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So I I lean there. Do you have a final selection, Mike? Uh, I guess if I have to get the if go from anyone, I would go with the deeper one. Deep dish. All right, Twitter question from Mr. Gorbelage. Tear down this <laughs> wall. Well, he's, he's got a conundrum for us. How many syllables are there in the word squirrel? Mm. Two. One. Squirrel. 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 Did squirrel. Jason just say one? Yeah, squirrel. It, it, squirrel. It's I, at I, least, it's at least no, two. It's two. I, I get, it's I get that there's squirrel. Squirrel. I get that Oh, it could be one. Did two... you ever do that trick as a kid? Yeah, where you yeah how they, they how many tell times you, your jaw when you say opens. the word how many times Wait, did your what? jaw Hold go down? On. I'm not aware of this trick. What is it? Yeah, however, like, when, when your jaw opens every time it's a new syllable. Yeah, so then that, under that it's squirrel, and that's like one then, right? Squirrel. So if you were to squirrel. say this word squirrel. and squirrel. really squirrel. pronounce it, it's two. It's I think squirrel. It's two. Squirrel yeah. is squirrel. two, but nobody says, "Look at those squirrels in the tree." You say a squirrel. You say, Look at like you said a normal the same sentence. Word. <laughs> no way. <laughs> squirrel. It did sound normal when you said, you're like, <laughs> nobody you're says, lousy, look at that squirrel ears. in the tree. Squirrel. Nobody says, look at that squirrel in the tree. They say, look at that squirrel. You're saying I'm saying it the same way because you're well, crazy. If, if, you're nuts. If you take the uh, your your uh, over inflection on the <laughs> L out, you're just saying the word exactly the same. No, I don't say squirrel. But it's squirrel. pronouncing the, it's, judge, it, no, the judge. difference is pronouncing that second R. Are you pronouncing the second R like squirrel, or uh, are you just saying squirrel? Okay, no, okay. You don't I have to saying. sound like you're you're like uh, drunk when you're saying squirrel. Squirrel. The I know the actual answer, Brooks. How many do you think? Yeah, there the is? actual answer has to be two. It's two. Yeah. Thanks for this one. question, Brooks. Squirrel. Really appreciate it. Squirrel. You can get it out in one. Yeah. I normally just say chipmunk. <laughs> two. Which syllables. is mo more syllables. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, YouTube question. Uh, we're wrapping it up here momentarily. Ike wants to know what kind of advice can you give to someone who wants to start a podcast? Not necessarily about sports, but just anything. What is good podcasting advice? This is one of our most sure. frequently asked questions. So I've, I've got a couple pieces of advice. Uh, number one, your audio quality really does matter. And it's, it's not rocket science to be able to get good audio. You just jump on YouTube. A do squirrel some could do it. <laughs> research on uh, on how to use an, an audio interface, a digital audio workstation. Just put in a few hours of research, and you're going to be able to to figure it out no problem. And then, um, and then the other piece of advice is just start. Just get it going. When you start, you're gonna suck. We sucked really bad when we first started this podcast. You guys did. <laughs> yeah, you guys were awful. We yes, thank thank you. We we sucked when it was the th the three of us. Like if we go back now and listen oh. to the our first shows, 
we will we will all go. Jason's furiously shaking his head no, saying no, I will not. I will not go back unless it's just par. It's the name of the game, man. It's reps. No one jumps on a microphone and is incredible right away. You're not just Dan Patrick without putting in the work. And and don't don't try I love to, you, Dan. Yeah. Don't try to be something. Don't try to be whatever you think a podcaster should be. Be whoever you are. Uh, otherwise, you, you it's just hard to keep up that, you know, some fake persona. Yeah, you're not going to enjoy it. And I would say two other bits of information is podcasting and establishing a podcast takes time and consistency. So that's a big key that I tell people that ask me is, you know, coming out with a schedule of when you release shows and having a topic that you're excited enough about to push through, you know, putting out, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 shows where you're excited to talk about it and the growth might not happen right away. Because if you don't, if you're talking about something because you're like, oh man, there's a there's a space in the market for a podcast about, you know, shoes, but you hate shoes, you're not going to make it. That's what I would say. You know, make sure you love what you're talking about. All right, Brooks, do we have any other uh, questions that you've been wanting to hear us answer? Like, will we ever actually send a paycheck along to you? Any of those questions? Unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need it. Anything we're, we're missing? One, we're getting one more food one in. Okay, sneak it in, Brooks. You you can ask it. From Instagram, you have to eat one type and flavor of chips for the rest of your life. What is it? Ooh. Okay, is plain allowed? Yeah, I would, absolutely. I, oh yeah, rest of my life, I'm going. I'm going plain plain potato chips. Just a, like a what brand? Like a just salt. Uh, Lay's, Pringles, Ruffles. What kind of? What no, I go ruffle. Night? Plain ruffle. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Man, the rest yes. of the life really. It irks yep. it because the, the I I didn't know it was my favorite until the beginning of COVID, and I had the uh, additional midsection to show that this was my <laughs> new favorite chip. Uh, but Takis and uh, the specifically the purple bag, I don't know what flavor it is. I just know it's the purple bag of Takis, and oh my goodness, these things are so good. But they are really hot, really spicy, and you can't just. You, you can't just gobble these things down forever the, like the they're regular potato fuego, chips. Wait, those are Fuego mini snack bites? Yeah. Are those oh. the ones that have stuff inside of them? The mozzarella filling? No, it's essentially oh, okay. just a, it's a, like a rolled up corn chip. Okay. And then, and then doused in spice of doom that is okay, so Okay, it looks delicious. like that's the Fuego flavor, Mike. You like yes. the spicy. Jason, what I do you think? My, my favorite standard chip would be a, a barbecue. I like barbecue chips. However, if I could only eat one chip the rest of my life, I wouldn't choose that. I probably have to go tortilla because oh, really? now I can get salsa. So healthy? Now I can get guacamole. <laughs> now I can get queso. Uh, I mean, that's that's point. the problem. Like, are you gonna take your ruffle and dip it in well, some? Well, I assume that you were just eating the chip as it stands. Yeah. And you didn't need what, to what supplement if, your chip with accessories. No, no, no. But my point is more the fact that you can't use a different. Like in the situation where you want some guac, you have to use your ruffle. You have to use your your right, stop breaking stop breaking the question, Jason. Yeah, he chip. did break the there question. Is, there are no additional things you can put on the chip. It's yeah, just you, the chip. You get the plain tortilla chips now. That's all we're saying. Was that what you would still pick? No, I would probably pick a, a salt, uh, like a kettle cooked salt. Oh, those are chip. good. Yeah, I I will say this. Like, uh, we didn't know what questions were on today's show, but if any of these companies that we've just happened to shout out <laughs> wants to just sponsor a segment, we're down to clown. Mike can do a spicy hot Takis oh, pick of the you week. My, my hot take of the week? <laughs> Your hot Takis of the week. Oh, okay. All right. We can work on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll give it. We don't normally uh, brainstorm these live. All right. That is it for today's episode of the show. Thank you, everybody who sent in questions. Always a lot of fun. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to everybody who has left us reviews on Apple Podcasts and supported the show. It's going to be a really, really fun 2021. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.